It's a commonly held belief that the taller the rider, the longer their cranks should be. So for example, a rider of around six foot should have cranks of 175 millimeters, and a shorter rider, under five foot nine, should ride cranks of around 170 millimeters. But does this belief hold any water in the modern pro peloton? Well, we're here at the Abu Dhabi Tour to conduct an in-depth survey amongst the World Tour teams to find the answer to that very question. This is by no means an exact science, but a very rough formula for crank length based on height is as follows. This formula assumes that the crank length is around 9.7% of our height and that everyone is of roughly the same proportion, which of course we aren't. It doesn't take into account the length of the tibia, femur and foot, which of course are key biomechanical factors. Now another important thing to point out is that cranks are only readily available in 170, 172.5 and 175 mm lengths. So riders under 175 centimetres in height only have 170 mm cranks and above as their option. I raced on 172.5, then latterly 175 mm cranks, but the formula suggests that I should be on 177.5 cranks as I'm 183 centimetres tall. So, that all said, what does our sample of 100 World Tour riders indicate to us? Is this rough formula a useful guide or not? Dimension data pit now. Now, that's Igor Anton's bike. He's a climber, pretty small. I reckon he should be on 170s. Let's check. Yep, 170s. Fits with the formula. Thirty of the sample group used 170mm cranks and their height ranged between 169cm and 181cm. 43 of the group were on 172.5mm cranks with heights between 172cm and 187cm. 26 of the group rode 175mm cranks with a height range between 182cm and 190cm. From this we can see that riders largely sit within the formula. So does this mean that the formula is right? Well, no. As you can see by the height ranges, there are more than a few anomalies. And one rider, our friend Adam Hansen, was out on his own, riding 180 millimetre cranks, and he's 186 centimetres tall. Adam, we know you run pretty long cranks, 180 mils. How did you come to that decision to ride cranks so long? Uh, it first started like years ago when um, years ago when you had an SRM, you had to um, work out the slope yourself, and there was a big formula for it. You had about five kilo weight and on it, and it was um, pretty complicated. Anyway, you had to put crank length in there, and, I, and then that sort of surprised me a little. And then I I worked out from that that uh, you know power equals torque multiplied by RPM, and then so this, my theory was always based on okay, so the longer the crank, the less torque you must put on the pedal, so less weight you must put on the pedal for the same amount of power, and. For me, it's a more efficient way of riding, um, and a good example is if you take a nut off a wheel of a car, you know, if you have a short leverage, it's really hard, but if you long one, it's actually easier to change the tyre and take the, the nut off a wheel. So it's a lot, a lot less effort has to be put in for the same amount of um, force. And when I, I spoke to a few mechanical engineers, um, and I'd prefer to speak to them to a biomechanical engineer, because a biomechanical engineer knows more about the body, but doesn't know the effect of the of what the body does onto the bike. You notice how the best, the best for your body to produce the maximum power, but that power transforming from the pedal back to the back wheel, that's more mechanical because it goes through crank arms, right? And a mechanical engineer will say it's far more efficient to, um, to have a longer crank. And so does that affect your, I mean, it's just it's simple physics in this leverage is, is far more efficient, but you're a pretty tall guy as well, so I guess you're more pre predisposed to be able to ride efficiently with a longer crank as well. Well, if you talk about um, rider height, the, you know, Pantani used 180 cranks. He's short, he's super short. He used to climb like a goat. Um, and, and if you compare the crank length to ratio of the leg, um, I'm actually using super short ratios, like my crank arm length and my leg ratio, to um, Quantani, who's like I'm probably 40% longer legs than him, but my cranks aren't 40% longer than his. They're like maybe five or you know four percent longer than his. So it's um, all this about uh, 
Yeah, I think it's. I think people have. Well, I, I truly believe it comes down to manufacturers. You know, um, Shimano, Campag, and Shram. I don't want to say bad things about them, but I know bike shops. They cannot have 20 pairs of cranks. You know, they want to make a standard 172.5. Everyone rides 172.5. Yeah, okay. If you're huge, you go to one. 75 or 180s but then um so it's just easier for the bike manufacturing bike shops to have one cr standard crank length everyone rides and that's it so so a short answer is a lot of thought has gone into determining your crank length without a shadow of a doubt absolutely fascinating oh, for sure i wouldn't just jump on anything <laughs> one of those anomalies from our group was nairo quintana he was the shortest at 167 centimeters tall but rode 172.5 millimeter cranks and at the other end of the scale track rider john dibbon at 185 centimetres tall, rides only 170 millimetre cranks. We're here with Katusha. Now they've got one particularly tall rider, Ilna Zakharin, who, according to the formula, should be on 175 millimetre cranks. Let's go and check. So, here's Zakharin's ultimate CF SLX. SRAM red cranks. Let's have a little peek. Ah, 172.5. Interesting. This is Julian Bernard's bike, and as you can see, it's a very, very small frame, so you typically think this rider, being a small, light climber, would use 170 millimetre cranks. Let's have a look. And he actually bucks the trend a little bit, 172.5. The formula is a rough guide, and only that. There are a number of other factors we haven't touched, particularly cadence and riding style, and that's another video entirely. Now we know this topic will ignite the comment section and we'd love to hear what you have to say. Well, I think you'll agree, some very interesting results there. Now, so you don't miss another GCN video, how about subscribing, click on the globe, it's absolutely free. Now sticking on the subject of cranks, how about clicking just up here for a GCN Does Science video when we look at the importance or not of crank length and click just down here for the importance or not of saddle height.